Hello there, my name is Sixo, but more on that later as now it's time for a brand new unboxing video. And today we're going to try and answer that age old question. Does it come in black? Well, yes, my friends, it does indeed, as this is none other than Takara Tomy Masterpiece MP49 Black Convoy otherwise known as Nemesis Prime. Seriously though, who gave them the idea of doing an Optimus Prime toy in black? I mean, what will they think of next? Let's take a look. MP49 Black Convoy is the latest Takara Tomy masterpiece release and continues the grand tradition of representing a black Optimus Prime, also known by many as Nemesis Prime. It's certainly not the first example we've seen of that happening in the Masterpiece line, but it is the first repaint to be released of the most recent iteration of the Convoy mold, MP44. It's a hugely intricate and highly articulated depiction of the Autobot leader. MP49 is also a slimmed down release though, with no trailer in sight, a lighter set of accessories and a tidier price tag to match. Black Optimus repaints have been a thing for years now, with the first example being Beast Wars Black Lyo Convoy from 1998, and the first Black G1 Prime coming two years later as a Jafcon convention exclusive. They've since become a staple of the Masterpiece line too, so I'll be keen to see if this latest example lives up to the legacy, and if it proves to be a worthy purchase for collectors who felt that MP44 was a little on the pricey side. Last thing before we begin, this review comes courtesy of TF Source, so you'll find a link to their listing in the video description. I'll also be getting a full gallery and review up on their blog ASAP after giving you my first impressions today. Right, well here is MP49 in his box, and it's <laughs> very typical of your, your classic masterpiece box style. Um, I really like the masterpiece packaging, uh, always have done, and I always admire the fact that they haven't altered the design of it despite the fact that it's the longest running line in Transformers history, so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and this does exactly what you would want it to do, long life design logo just here, uh, and indeed pictures of the toy on the front. Back of the box follows suit two with some nice product photography showing off the toy and all its various gimmicks, some poses, bits that you get in the box, it's exactly what you'd expect. Right, well let's go ahead and get that box open. Done. the clamshell. Right, well there's the toy and all of the accessories, we'll check those out in just a minute. You also have a little baggie which contains the instructions and the character card as well. Uh, I will say the card, I don't normally comment on these much, but it's very flimsy. Uh, it's literally just like, um, uh, well you can see there, it's, it just bends like that right, uh, right in my hand. It feels very uh, very lackluster compared to what they used to be like. It's funny, you know, because much was made of the instructions for MP44 and how complicated they were, and whilst this is, well, certainly the same in terms of the design of the instructions, the booklet is noticeably thinner on account of not having the, uh, the trailer to take account of, I guess. Anyway, let's get the toy out of the clamshell, shall we? There we go. Right, so here's the contents of the box. This is the toy itself. We'll take a look at that properly in just a minute, of course. We've got the alternate head, which of course is meant to represent the different ways that Optimus Prime looks in the animation on the MP44 release, but here it is in Nemesis colours. We've got the matrix of leadership, which is now looking very sparkly indeed, with a little red centre. We've got an Energon X, uh, which by law has to be included with any release of a masterpiece Optimus Prime. Uh, this time it's cast in a, this kind of teal colour. We've got this weapon blast part, which is uh, meant to tab onto the end of his gun to look like he's firing. And of course you've got the gun itself, which we'll take a look at properly later, but of course taps into his hand. And that is it! That's everything in the entire box, which uh, no doubt explains why this release is significantly cheaper than the MP44 original overall. Uh, and as many people have noted, now comes without the trailer. Uh, it doesn't come with the, the humanoid companions. Um, I mean that really the trailer is the, the main aspect uh, here that, that makes the price change, because it probably doesn't sound like a big deal, and if you have MP10 but maybe not MP44, then you probably don't appreciate, you know, quite how much goes into that trailer. But there is quite a lot in there, uh, you know, with the command unit and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, a surprising amount of uh, play value and gimmicks loaded into it. Is that worth the additional cost of MP44? And would people have preferred a slimmed down release a, a bit more like this um, for the original? Well, that's up to you to answer individually, I'm, I'm sure, but I've no doubt that some people would say yes, they, they would have preferred that indeed. 
In terms of vehicle mode, I have to say he looks pretty nice. I mean, I, I actually really like this vehicle mode overall, I have to say. Uh, it is interesting for me to see because to be completely honest, I, <laughs> I actually haven't transformed MP44 back into his vehicle mode since I first got him. Um, I just haven't sort of necessarily wanted to, I guess. Um, I have been enjoying him in robot mode quite a lot, but uh, for one reason or another, the temptation has just never quite been enough to, <laughs> to actually go through the conversion process again. So I am looking forward to taking a look at this guy today, uh, the Nemesis version, um, and seeing how it is. But for now, it is nice to take a look at this, uh, this vehicle mode. And overall, I think it cleans up pretty well. I mean, the, the main aspect, of course, of that is the, is the cab section here, which looks very tidy indeed. Uh, I mean, I, I think you know, if, those of you that follow me will know that I love the MP10 mold, uh, and I think the, the truck mode on that is really, really cool. But actually, I have to say that the, the MP44 mold um, does clean up really nicely, and the cab just looks very cohesive, very clean indeed, and arguably does uh, maybe even a better job at, at sort of looking like a real world vehicle, you know, in terms of this uh, cab design at the front. So, um, yeah, I, I do like it. It's good to see it again in hand. Of course, I'd be a bit remiss if I didn't comment on that back section, which, yeah, does look a bit untidy. It's only fair to say that this whole area here is very, uh, very kibbletastic, uh, really is. There's, there's lots of bits of robot mode stuff just kind of stashed in there. Um, and it, yeah, people will definitely have opinions on that. Um, for my part, I think these, these two chrome pieces, which um, form the, the, the sort of cylinders on the sides of his legs uh, in robot mode, they're probably the worst offender because of the way that they're just kind of folded over and you can see the inside, the sort of hollow inside part just here. So that's probably the bit that I like the least on the back of this um, truck mode. Uh, but even this sort of bit here, just this internal mechanism bit here, doesn't quite work. It doesn't, it, I, I don't know, it doesn't come together quite as neatly as maybe it could. Um, I'm willing to forgive quite a bit uh, with Optimus Prime truck modes, but yeah, it does look a little bit messy from the back. I guess maybe that's one of those aspects of MP44 anyway that um, you know the trailer kind of hid quite well because you tend to display the thing with the trailer in place whereas on this release no trailer so mm, it's always going to be a little bit more visible that back section in uh, in truck mode but you know overall it still looks really really great I really like it. What is interesting is uh, that you you notice straight away that these black sections are actually unpainted, which is in stark contrast to MP44, which was literally loaded with paint. I mean, really loaded with it to the point where, I mean, even I was, you know, quite nervous at times, uh, making sure not to scratch the paint, etc. So maybe people will prefer that this is unpainted and, you know, you can be a little bit more robust with it. Uh, or maybe you might feel that they're cheapening out a little bit by not having any paint on it. Oh, you know, perhaps that's uh, another reason for the dramatic price uh, decrease as well. Uh, who's to say on that score? But uh, for my part, I don't mind this being unpainted. I'm actually looking forward to, to giving it a go without that fear of kind of scratching it or whatever else. So it does have a couple of nice little paint accents up here on the top. Very shiny front bumper section, as you would expect. That looks uh, fantastic. Really digging the translucent red windshield just there, the windows, that uh, they look uh, really cool. More bling to be had on these wheels, and then you've got uh, rubber tyres as well. Maybe I've conveniently forgotten this on MP44, but these bits on the back stick out like a sore thumb too. Movable wing mirrors, feel a lot more robust than the MP10 mould as well. Really, really dig that, uh, that hollow Decepticon logo just here on the side. That looks fantastic. Really, really like it. Uh, it's not molded in any way, it's flat to the touch, um, but it looks superb. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more later about um, this character being a Decepticon, but yeah, for now that looks great. And of course these little doors uh, do open as well, they just kind of pull open like that. And uh, there's no real uh, interior to speak of, so it's not worth showing off. Um, you know, on the MP44 mold, of course, you could, in theory anyway, fit the little human characters um, spike and spark plug inside there. Uh, in practice, it was quite a pain to do, <laughs> so, uh, and they're not included with this release anyway, so uh, no worries. But yeah, you can still open the doors if you want. Now it's worth mentioning that you can also store his blaster in his vehicle mode, uh, and it's quite easy to do. So first thing you do is just fold the gun round like so, and fold the handle away, and then it clips onto this little tab just here. Which So firstly, firstly you just need to pull it out like that and then it exposes that little um, that little nub and then oh, it just clips on like that. 
I mean, look, it's definitely not the best weapon storage that I've ever seen on a vehicle mode, but uh, it is there if you want to use it. Uh, you can kind of angle it slightly like that if you prefer. Um, the instructions show it being more at, uh, at that sort of angle. Uh, it's, it's really up to you. It's there if you want to use it. So you know what, overall it's not perfect, and yeah, that back section is a little bit untidy, but I really rate this uh, vehicle mode, I have to say. I, I really, really dig it. I think it looks great. The black colour looks nice in hand. Yes, it's not painted. Um, it doesn't really bother me, to be completely honest. I'm kind of, as I say, looking forward to taking a pass at it with no paint to worry about. Um, so overall, nice first impression. Right, well as a final thing for vehicle mode, we'll go ahead and do a few, um, few comparisons. And what better comparisons to do than some other black masterpiece repaints. So we have uh, MP12G, uh, which is the G2 Sideswipe, and MP25L Loud Pedal. Uh, both looking fantastic in their sultry black colour schemes, uh, and really, you know, lining up quite nicely against the new MP49, actually. Um, and, you know, it's hard to know where releases like this fit into a collection. You know, do you put them with your Decepticons and cartoon lineups be damned, or do you find something a bit different to do with it? And uh, it's interesting because, of course, this guy is actually meant to be an Autobot, the other two are Decepticons. Does that really matter to you? I don't know. I, I know there are lots of people who just like really cool looking masterpiece setups. Uh, and for my part, you know, I think this these kind of, um, you know, sort of unique lineups when you, when you find characters that work together or toys that work together like this, uh, it just looks really, really stunning. So um, certainly I think they, they all look fantastic next to one another. Um, the only slightly jarring thing maybe is that this guy again is, is unpainted, whereas the other two do have a nice, uh, very sort of shiny uh, paint job on them. Um, I, I guess I want to draw a bit of attention to Loud Pedal in particular, which has a very glossy but fine layer of paint on it, uh, to the point where actually you almost wouldn't imagine that he is painted uh, until you get him in hand and, and, and really look closely. And I guess that's the kind of finish that I might have imagined on, uh, on the old Nemesis convoy here. But um, yeah, obviously that's not to be. Um, I mean, still, it's, it works fine in hand. Uh, it's just interesting to see how they've, they've done it a bit differently, that's all. Um, but yeah, a nice lineup all the same. Right, well now it's the moment that I've been uh, looking forward to. I have actually been looking forward to it, I can say that honestly. Uh, it's transformation time. So uh, now I haven't done this, as I say, since uh, I first got MP44 out of the box and that was some time ago. So I'm really looking forward to giving it the once over again. Let's get cracking.
Okay, and here he is in his robot mode. And, well, as expected, it's a black MP44. Um, but it, <laughs> that said, it, is, uh, it does look really, really nice. And uh, you know what? Actually, the transformation was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing that. And, uh, you know, it, it's one of those that people talk about it a lot and will say how complicated it is. And, you know, it's a sign of everything gone wrong with the Masterpiece line and it's become too fiddly and, and too intricate and whatever else. But actually, you know what? When you have it in hand, you just have to kind of trust me if you've not done it. It is actually a lot of fun. Uh, at no point did I feel like anything was going to break. At no point did I feel stressed. Uh, the instructions actually are very clear. If you just take your time and do it step by step, uh, it actually ends up feeling pretty logical. And there are a couple of bits which are really quite satisfying. I mean, the legs are very complicated to get to this stage. Uh, yes, but once you get everything in the right place, as I say, just follow the instructions and, and you'll get there quite easily. Uh, and when it all clips together, uh, and, the, and the bits sort of swing into the legs and it all kind of tabs. It's really very satisfying because it, it just has a very um, precise way of coming together that is, is really, as I say, really very satisfying overall. Um, and to be honest, the same is true of the main body um, and the arms as well, to be honest, the whole thing. Uh, you know, there's a couple of bits that when the head uh, rotates around that just, you know, feel uh, really quite nice as, as you're doing them. And uh, I have to say, actually, I think I probably did enjoy it more with this guy than with the original MP44, uh, just on account of the, the lack of paint, if anything, as I said earlier, you know, I think it, it, it's also probably made some of the tolerances a little bit different. Um, some of the, the bits where maybe you were concerned about paint rub, you know, you don't have that same worry, uh, but also it, it just sort of snaps together quite nicely. So yeah, I was impressed. Yeah, and it cleans up pretty well. And I, you know, it's funny because I wasn't sure how enamored I was going to be with this uh, this particular release from the photos that I'd seen. And there was just something about the promo pics that, I don't know, left me feeling slightly underwhelmed. And, and maybe it's because I already have uh, MP10B, which is the, the black repaint of the, you know, the, the last uh, Masterpiece Convoy mold. But um, I don't know, I just, I didn't, there was something about this release that wasn't doing it for me. Uh, but actually seeing him in hand, yeah, it is really nice. Yes, it's bare plastic. So automatically he's, he kind of feels slightly less premium in, uh, by that regard. But actually, you know what, it's a lovely design and, and seeing it in black, it does look really, really cool, um, has to be said. Um, so, you know, and, and there's, a lot, there's a lot to like about it. I mean, first up, there's that head sculpt, which is just brutally good. I mean, <laughs> there are very, very few head sculpts that capture the character quite like this one does and it, I, I just think it's absolutely marvelous i uh, love it on the original mp44 love it on this one too uh, those red eyes look look really killer as well um, and, and just make him look very very menacing um, i just absolutely adore this head sculpt overall this hip section does look slightly underwhelming with um, the sort of tealish light teal plastic there again it's unpainted so you know, it's not as impressive as MP44 when it comes to the smaller details. I mean, there are some painted sections like the vents on the leg, which add a bit of a pop, so that's something. But really, you know, I think a lot of the heavy lifting is actually done by the chrome here, which um, really catches the light very nicely, as you would expect, uh, and certainly adds quite a pop to this uh, rather black uh, or dark colour scheme overall. There's also some relatively nice translucent green plastic uh, or teal plastic just in uh, areas such as the forearms. Um, it's fairly nondescript actually, it doesn't really um, sort of catch the light as much as you might imagine, but you know, still, it looks nice. And one thing that does surprise me is, uh, is how muted the red is in the, in the chest doors, the chest windows, um, because uh, I don't know, I guess it would, I sort of imagined it might pop a little bit more in hand and, and just kind of look a bit more vibrant, but actually, it's, if anything, it's slightly muted, uh, so it doesn't stand out as much as you might first imagine. And of course, I mentioned it already, but that clear Decepticon logo on the arm is, is giving me life. It looks really, really spectacular. Um, I like that they didn't go for a block purple Decepticon logo, just because it looks a little bit different. Um, I mean, you know what, I, I alluded to it earlier, but I actually still do kind of miss the days when Nemesis Prime repaints like this, or Black Convoy, whatever you want to call him, uh, when they were Autobots. Um, you know, the original MP1B, which was the black repaint of the first Masterpiece Optimus Prime or Masterpiece Convoy, was, was an Autobot. And uh, it's only with sort of later releases like um, uh, MP10B that they've started to become Decepticons. Uh, indeed, the original Jafcon Prime, the, the black uh, G1 Prime, 
was an Autobot too. Uh, so I don't know, I, I just always thought there was something a bit more interesting about that, like a, a, a sort of dark, but, but still an Autobot uh, Optimus Prime. But hey, the, if they're gonna be Decepticons, that's cool too. Of course, there's a few gimmicks to consider, the first of which is the, uh, the swappable head. So you just pretty simply slide the default head off, sent to see it go, but hey, uh, and then the new head slides on in its place like so. And you know what? The spare head is fun too. I mean, I'll be honest, I'll probably never use it. Uh, it's nice enough. It's, it's obviously meant to represent, as I say, uh, some of the, the scenes in the, the G1 Sumbo cartoon where Optimus was drawn slightly differently, yeah, just different animation. And, um, you know, it, it does a good job in that regard. So some people may prefer this as that's kind of what they think of as the cartoon prime. For me, I, I definitely prefer the stock face, but it's a nice inclusion. Of course, then you've got the gun, which folds back like so, and then just tabs in relatively securely into his palm like so. And that looks really good. I uh, really like the gun on this design, uh, the MP44 49 design. I uh, think it looks great. Way better than the MP10 gun, uh, which of course was slightly undersized uh, due to the gimmick of it fitting in the backpack, whereas there's no such thing here, um, and it looks much better as a result. Of course, you've then got this blast effect piece, which can go on the end. That just pops into place very easily like that. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I quite like that it's teal, so uh, it lends itself to this particular iteration of the character and makes it look a bit different from MP44. And uh, overall, yeah, I like, I like that they included that. I, I, I don't use it a lot, certainly, uh, you know, for MP44 anyway, but um, I, it's fun to see them include these little, uh, these little accessories. Uh, they're not very consistent with it, but hey, at least they're doing it. Should you prefer, though, when you're not uh, using the gun, then you can store it just like that on his backpack, uh, you know, just by tabbing it into the side of his body there. And uh, I actually think that looks kind of nifty. Alternatively, you can fold it up again, flip up this little panel here, which, uh, yeah, is on his bum. And then exactly the same as you do in his truck mode, you just slide it on like so. And that gives you what I can only say is the least graceful weapon storage I think I ever did see. <laughs> uh, I mean, seriously, it's like they, uh, they, they had that storage already for vehicle mode because it's the same part. And then clearly when they were designing him, they got him transformed and then thought, oh, look, it works for robot mode too. But uh, perhaps they should have just left it. Anyway, there's also this little uh, Energon axe as well, uh, which in this case is also teal and, and looks kind of nice, actually. It's got a kind of sparkly quality to it. Now, if you're more familiar with the MP10 design of this toy, then this might come as a surprise, but you actually have to pull the... Oof, sorry, it's quite difficult to do. Pull the whole hand off altogether. There we go. Uh, it just comes off at the joint like that. And then the axe just clips on in its place like so. And actually, that does look kind of cool, if I'm honest. Uh, I, I, I guess I always feel like I'm over these Energon axes realistically, as they've been a gimmick now for, well, decades, literal decades. <laughs> um, but still, this one does look kind of nice. Uh, maybe it's just the colour or the fact that it kind of looks quite menacing on this, uh, this particular uh, paint scheme. But um, yeah, it's, it looks fun. And of course, last but not least, we have the Matrix accessory, uh, which of course is going to go right in the chest on our Nemesis Prime just here. So the first thing to do is to get those doors open, like so. Then you flip this little panel up. Then of course it's primed uh -huh, for you to uh, <laughs> go ahead and put it straight in like so. And I have to say, I think that looks really, really nice, really nice. Uh, I'll be honest, the Matrix accessory wasn't one that I really bothered with too much on MP44. Um, I just always found that the, the chest doors were quite cumbersome to get open. Um, and so it always puts me off trying, uh, to be honest, just because, you know, fears of scratching the paint or whatever. But it's way easier on this version. I don't know if that's, again, just because of the, you know, the slight difference with not having that you know, that layer of paint sort of thickening everything up. But the chest doors and, and actually the tab inside as well, everything just opens up way, way easier. And that just felt like much less of a chore. So, and, and there's something about the kind of monochrome result with the face, the red, it, it just looks glorious. 
Just a small tip though, if ever you do want to get the thing out then you need to pull this entire section forward a little bit just to be able to get the, uh, the clearance to get your fingernails around the side of the matrix there. Right, well let's go ahead and talk articulation and there's quite a bit. I mean firstly that head has a superb range of motion, uh, can look quite far up and a little bit down, not too much. Superb range of motion at the shoulders which have a, a kind of butterfly joint here so they can actually go back and forth which is um, really quite something in terms of posability. Uh, can move up uh, on, well there's actually two hinges, one there and one actually at the shoulder itself uh, and of course can move forward as well on a little ratchet. Bicep swivel too and of course a pretty decent bend at the elbow. Hands are quite poseable with articulation at the thumb and the Fingers too, with the first finger there just being on a separate piece and the others all being moulded together. Uh, but you've got articulation at two points and then you've got wrist swivel and quite a decent bit of movement at the wrist like that too. Waist swivels are a little bit odd as you do get a tiny bit uh, anyway but then you kind of need to oh, unpeg it like that at the back which can be quite hard to do uh, and then you get a lot more actually which is uh, a little bit strange. And having unpegged it, you'll get an ab crunch as well. But to be honest, it looks a little bit awkward just because of where the uh, the gap kind of sits, uh, you know, between the, the top and bottom sections of the robot mode. I always think it looks a little bit awkward on this toy. One thing I do love is these hip skirts, which uh, move naturally when you move the, uh, move the, the hips uh, upwards like that, uh, which are on a ratchet. Uh, but you can see they just kind of pop in. They're on little springs, so they come back. Uh, into position as well. Uh, that to me is very, very cool. Really like it. That's a superb bit of design from Takara Tomy there um, and just really elevates these kinds of toys. Um, it's just genius, really. Now, the knees were a real source of comment on MP44 and the original release of this mold um, because lots of people had problems with them, lots of people saying it was a QC error. I never really had any drama with mine, to be honest, but um, I will say that they do seem really solid on this release, really, really solid. Nice clicky ratchets, uh, so no concern there. Uh, and actually the, the knees do go quite far as well. They'll go all the way around for a decent kind of kneel bend. And you've got really decent uh, ankle tilt like that, and a, a little bit of inward ankle tilt as well for a decent run. And uh, yeah, a bit of, bit of toe articulation too, if that's your thing. All of which leaves MP49 feeling like a really superb action figure. I mean, to me, this is where this design comes into its own, is with the posing. Because it's just got so many joints, it's so kind of fluid and intuitive, the way that it moves. It, it's just an absolute dream to pose. I've had great fun taking pictures of MP44 in its robot mode. Uh, and genuinely, I can't wait to do the same with MP49 because already off the bat you can just see it's a lot of fun to pose a lot of fun and really it's just because this figure is quite hard to to pose badly I mean it just kind of ends up looking really natural whatever you do with it um, such are the joints and everything else it just feels very kind of humanoid uh, and almost like a sort of poseable model uh, the way that it's designed and really my only bugbear my only small complaint as I say is that waist which uh, you know whether it's on account of the ab crunch and, and to a certain extent the waist swivel does just sort of look slightly odd if you're not careful with how you pose it but you know a bit of care and attention and really he just looks amazing yeah I really can't wait to get this thing in front of a camera properly and take some uh, <laughs> take some snaps because as I say just a lot of fun to pose um, I mean, just looking at uh, here, you can see that he's still got quite a backpack, obviously, and I'm sure that's a complaint that some people will have about this design, uh, particularly as they have taken out the electronics now. So the previous uh, design, MP44, of course, had um, large backpack, but that was kind of, to a certain extent, um, allowed for, given that it had some electronics in the back with um, some voice chips, uh, whereas this actually doesn't have that. They've taken out the electronics. Uh, for better or for worse. Uh, I'm not too worried about the, the lack of electronics myself and to be honest I would have happily not had them in MP44 to be completely honest. That's not what I look for in, uh, in, in my toys uh, these days um, but, uh, but still for better or for worse it, it has gone here. Right well now we're going to go ahead and do a few comparisons and uh, what better figures to compare this guy to than some of his uh, masterpiece Black Convoy brethren. So here is the original uh, example. This is MP1B, 
And here is the, well, the more recent example, uh, MP10B, which of course is a, a repaint of the, uh, the MP10 mold. And uh, well, it's really interesting to see them all, all lined up together, um, all representing, of course, different eras of this uh, long running Transformers line. Uh, so if you do collect Masterpiece, I mean, maybe you've not been collecting as far back as the, the original MP1 mold, but um, if you've never experienced it, I would highly recommend it still. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of people have maybe moved on from it now or forgotten about it, but it's still a classic. And gosh, there's just a lot to love about it. Um, you know, it's one of those that every time I pick up this design, like now, uh, I'm just reminded how quality it is, just the, the weight of it, the, 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 even beyond that, it's not just the fact that it's loaded with die cast, it's the little gimmicks that you find in areas such as the, as the legs and the arms, just the little pistons, uh, just the general build quality and everything else. It's a, it's a real landmark release uh, and of course, you know, ushered in uh, what we now know as the, as the masterpiece line in many ways. Um, interesting about this one is that of course it comes from the time when they were still, uh, Nemesis Prime or Black Convoy repaints were still depicted as Autobots. Uh, and this, you know, very similar to the original G1 uh, Jafcon Black Prime is, is, a, is an Autobot. And I really like that, I have to say. I always kind of gelled with the idea of Black Primes being Autobots or having Autobot logos anyway, for some reason. Um, I just think it's slightly more interesting than them being Decepticons because, you know, them being, uh, them being in black colours is, is, means that they're bad, you know, for some reason. Um, I, I don't know, and I, I do think that the red Autobot logo is, is quite visually striking with this one. Uh, but there's lots of lovely little details like the little yellow and, and touches here on the feet. Um, uh, even this blue uh, and the little blue colour just here as well is quite striking. So uh, overall, lot to love about MP1B. Then coming to the more recent iteration, this one uh, of course is a, a repaint of MP10 mould, which many, many people will be familiar with in, in one colour or another. Um, and uh, boy, have there been a few, but <laughs> still loving them. So uh, I have to say, when I first saw MP10B here in hand, I was really, really struck by it, really struck, because it's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous in hand. Uh, and there's lots of little details that make that so. Firstly, it's loaded with paint. It's got this really nice black shiny paint, uh, which actually, I have to be honest, compared in hand to MP49, does still look very striking. It does make the finish on MP49 look a bit, um, a bit drab, maybe by comparison. Uh, but it's beyond that. It's got you know really nice chrome. Uh, it's got these gorgeous um, red uh, windows just here. They they really catch the light in a way that the windows on MP49 do not. They again they look very uh, dull almost by comparison. These look very shiny with nice silver trim around the outside as well. They look great. It's also got these uh, beautiful. Uh, translucent green uh, or sort of teal uh, bits on the waist whereas again you know on MP49 you've just got these sort of unpainted plastic sections which actually look a little bit cheap by comparison um, and the silver paint here uh, and the, you know again the, the the paint on areas such as these arms and the feet just here uh, is also very striking um, and again you know <laughs> I hate to say it but does shape up nicely versus what you see here I mean no paint down here these uh, little, this is translucent plastic here, but it, it just doesn't catch the light in the same way. So all of that makes MP10B a really gorgeous toy to have in hand. Uh, in fact, the only bit I don't really like about it is these unpainted thighs, which are just kind of ugly, actually. I mean, even now, just looking at them, it, it, it's quite obvious that they're unpainted versus the rest of the toy. So that's always been a bit of a shame. I mean, coming over to MP49, uh, it's still nice. I still do like it. So, you know, yes, by comparison, it looks a little bit more drab, but uh, there's still a lot to like about it all the same. And it, you know, it is a lovely design. It does look really great. And uh, it's not quite as striking as MP10B or, or actually MP1B, if I'm completely honest in that regard, um, which is a shame, but you know, it still looks nice. It's still good. And then for real completeness sake, just to get all the Black Primes <laughs> on the go, here is the original uh, Jafcon version that I keep referring to. This is uh, the convention exclusive from the Jafcon convention from the year 2000. And uh, the, just, I guess, kind of the original uh, G1 Black Prime. Uh, just absolutely beautiful in hand. Uh, this is actually also an Autobot, although I haven't put the, the decals on mine because I kind of prefer it without um, for this particular release. Um, but yeah, just a, a glorious toy. Uh, really love that design anyway, and it looks great in black as well. 
Uh, still with the yellow eyes, interestingly. So there you go. But uh, interesting to see them all together. But you know, in terms of other comparisons, he also shapes up very nicely versus some of the other black repaints that we've already seen in vehicle mode. And if anything, this is just making me think that it's a bit of a shame that they don't do, uh, you know, every masterpiece design in black colours, because, uh, well, what a collection that would be, eh? Um, but as, uh, as it is, there are a few choice options, uh, including MP uh, Loud Pedal just here, and MP G2 Sideswipe. Um, and, you know, there are a couple of others as well, of course. Uh, shame we never got a black iron hide, or haven't yet. Uh, fingers crossed for that in the future, but for now, uh, this is what a black masterpiece repaint lineup could look like. And of course then you've got the uh, the kind of, I guess the major comparison that many many people will be looking to see, which is versus the original MP44 release uh, of this design uh, in traditional Optimus Prime colours. And uh, you know what, actually looking at them side by side, uh, it's a lot of fun. It has to be said, it is a lot of fun. As much as I occasionally roll my eyes and think, ugh, how predictable, uh, it's still fun to see a black Optimus Prime repaint versus the uh, the, the, the old red, white, and blue. Uh, and actually, it's it's really making me realize by comparison how vibrant the colors are on MP44, as uh, particularly the, the face sculpt really pops. I mean, they've got a darker face sculpt on um, uh, on old Black Convoy there, uh, you know, and, and slightly more sort of shiny paint in places. Uh, like the face, whereas actually it's much more matte on uh, on Optimus. And so it is interesting to, to kind of look at the two together. Um, and I really think that actually MP49 feels quite different, just on a, an account of not having that paint, etc. Um, but well, maybe it's just the darker colours as well. It just comes across as being very different in hand overall. You get a very different kind of experience for it. So I guess the big questions are, is it worth owning both versions of this mold? Uh, that might be you know, one of the things that people want to know. Um, for me, I'm very happy for it, I have to say. I've enjoyed the, the second kind of go round, as it were, uh, with the, um, the Black Convoy repaint. So uh, for me, I would say yes. Uh, if indeed you like the mold already um, and you're into the idea of owning another version, then yeah, it's a lot of fun, for sure. Uh, if you don't already own MP44, and you're thinking that actually maybe uh, you know this could be a, a cheaper way of, of experiencing the mold, then yeah, I think it's worth a go as well. Um, it's definitely not perfect by comparison, and there are some sections that you know, particularly like this uh, this waste section just here, that do look a bit drab by comparison to the original, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, one thing I haven't talked about much today is uh, is the knees, because lots and lots of people talk about the knees on MP44 being a major problem with that design all the time. In truth, I've never really experienced that. I've never had any problems with the knees on my copy. Maybe I've just been lucky, um, or, you know, I don't know. But it's just genuinely never been a problem for me. Whereas actually I have had the knees come just slightly untabbed on MP49 a couple of times, just posing him. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a major problem at all, and they're still fine. Um, but to the extent to which they've fixed the knees, supposedly, I don't know, uh, if I'm completely honest. Because, uh, as I say, it was never a problem for me originally, uh, so it's hard for me to comment and say, oh yeah, they're definitely fixed, they're way, way better. Um, so just take that maybe as a, a word of slight caution on that. Um, but, you know, overall, it's a lot of fun owning both of these. It's really interesting to see them together. And, you know, I can't wait to see what colours they come up with next. It'll be interesting to see. I think uh, all of the speculation I've seen has been that they'll follow, uh, as it tends to be, you know, people sort of think that they'll just follow the same recolours that they did for MP10. Uh, I really don't think they will. I think they'll come up with something different. Uh, maybe not for the next one, but, you know, I'm hopeful that we might see a, a blue powered convoy repaint, for example, or maybe a yellow shining Magnus uh, type repaint as well. That would be, certainly be something a little bit different, but uh, I guess we'll see in the future. So overall, you know, <laughs> I really dig it. I really, really like it. It's been great fun to play with this mold again um, and get to transform it, especially. I've really appreciated that opportunity. Um, and there's a lot to like about it. I mean, it, I think if you're after a super articulated, really nicely designed depiction of Optimus Prime in whatever color scheme, then this is definitely a great mold for that. And if you did uh, forego or miss out on MP44 for whatever reason, then this could be, you know, a, a more affordable, certainly, um, way to, to experience the mould. Uh, yes, it's lacking the paint, uh, and, and some of the elements of the finish are, are really, if I'm honest, a little bit subpar in terms of what we typically expect from the Masterpiece line. 
Uh, and so in that regard, it is actually still a bit pricey overall, considering the finish. Um, however, I mean, look, it's not going to get any cheaper, this design, is it? Let's be honest. So uh, if you really are curious and you want to give it a go, uh, I think on balance, overall, this is still a, a really a really great release. Uh, I really, really like it. So uh, I've got no, no hesitation in saying that overall, for me, first impressions, it's a toot. So that's MP49 Black Convoy. I'll put a link to TF Source's listing for this guy in the video description, and I'll be aiming to get the full review up on their blog ASAP. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then please drop me a like and maybe consider subscribing to the channel as well. Uh, thanks also to everyone who already supports me on Patreon, details of which are coming up at the end of the video. Otherwise, that's it from me, so enjoy the rest of your day. TTFN. <laughs> <laughs>